Hi, Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Today, we're going to start Chapter 5, Hydrocarbon, by learning Lesson 61, Alkin. Hydrocarbon is a big part of organic chemistry. It can be classified into aliphatic and aromatic, saturated and unsaturated. The natural sources of alkenes are petroleum and natural gas. We need to explain how to prepare alkenes in the lab by using hydrogenation of alkenes, decarboxylation of alkanoid salt, hydrolysis of green art region and wood traction. Then we need to describe the combustion of alkenes in excess and limited oxygen. Alkanes are less reactive than other compounds. They undergo free radical substitution reaction. And we need to know the halogenation mechanism for methane, ethane and propane. The mono substitution of alkane containing equivalent type of hydrogen atoms is also discussed as a neopentane. Firstly, what are hydrocarbons? They are compounds that is made up of only carbon and hydrogen. As you can see in this figure, it's an alkene here, alkane, aromatic compound, and alkyne. We'll look at the classifications after this. Compounds such as alkanes and cycloalkanes they only have single bonds, so we refer them as saturated hydrocarbons. They have maximum number of hydrogen that the carbon can possess. Compounds with multiple bonds, for example, alkenes, cycloalkenes, alkynes, and aromatic hydrocarbons are called unsaturated hydrocarbons because they possess fewer than the maximum number of hydrogen atoms. For hydrocarbon, we have several categories alkenes, cycloalkenes, alkenes, cycloalkenes, and alkynes. For aliphatic, meaning that it's not a ring. If it's having a benzene ring, we called it aromatic. The examples are benzene. Indine, naphthalene, and thracene. Let's look at example for the aliphatic hydrocarbons by revising the IUPAC naming. So the first one is alkane. They are five longest chain of carbon. One, two. 3, 4, 5, we circle the substituent. So the naming would be 3 methyl pentane. Ah, you remember? Yes. Second one is cycloalkenes. The longest chain would be cyclohexane. And this is the substituent. Let's count how many number of carbons it has. One, two, three, four. So we put butyl in front of the parent. Next, we're going to look at alkenes. So this is an alkene which has three carbon. One, two, and three. So we call this Pen, uh, sorry, propene, propene. The fourth example is a cycloalkene. So it has two double bonds at carbon number one and two, four and five. So the name would be one, four, hex. Sa dien or diane. All right, and the last one would be an alkyne. Alkyne has triple bond, 
So the name for this compound is propine. Alkene contains only single covalent bond. So we refer alkenes as saturated hydrocarbon. The general formula for the straight chain of alkene is CNH2N plus 2. And for cycloalkenes, since it is cyclic, it is CNH2N. One of the main natural source of alkenes. Petroleum and natural gas that is found in the crust of earth. They are formed by high temperature and pressure under anaerobic conditions from the plants and organisms that are buried under the earth a long time ago. This is why petroleum and natural gas are known as fossil fuels. In alkanes, each of the carbon atom is sp3 hybridized and it will form tetrahedral shape with four sigma bonds. The angles are 109.5 and then um, as we have looked at the example just now, IUPAC names would have the a and E suffix as parent. Natural gas is basically any gas that is coming out from us, perhaps, or animals containing methane, ethane, propane, and butane. The second natural source here is oil. I think it's referring to the petroleum. Uh, this petroleum is a mixture of liquid alkanes and other hydrocarbons. In our syllabus, we need to know the naming for up until 10 carbons in the longest chain as parent. So the first carbon is named methane alone. For two carbon, it's ethane. 3, propane, 4, butane. As you can see here, we use the condensed structure with a bracket for uh, 2CH2 over here. When we have 5 carbons, it is a pentane, 6, hexane, 7, heptane, 8, octane. 9 nonin and finally 10 carbons are decaying. This is a 3D drawing of uh, first five alkenes. Methane, as you can see there, is a tetrahedral. You can see the dotted lines here represented by this line and this is the wedges line and then uh, ethane has two carbons propane has three butane is like this this is a 3d drawing and lastly pentane so you can see why we draw skeletal structure as a zigzag because in the 3d drawing of compounds, we can see that the carbon atoms are uh, attached to each other as a zigzag, like this. Zoop, zap, zoop, zap. Now, starting from C4H10 onwards, alkanes show chain isomerism. Chain isomerism is them existing as linear or branches. This is your homework. Do practice 5.1 by drawing the chain isomers of the given molecular formula of alkenes C4H10, C5H12, 
C6H14 and C7H16. Next, we are going to look at the preparation of alkanes. There are four methods on how to prepare alkanes. Hydrogenation of alkenes, decarboxylation of alkanoate salt, hydrolysis of Grignard reagent, and Wood's reaction. This is the mind map showing all the four reactions, which you can straight away write in the page 213. Here, the first reaction is using alkene as a reactant, hydrogen gas as a reagent, and the condition is catalyst platinum, palladium, nickel, and heat. It will produce alkene. The second reaction is using haloalkene as a reactant. It's going to be turned into green art reagent first by magnesium and dry ether, and then it's going to be hydrolyzed to produce alkene. The third one is woods using haloalkene as reactant as well, and using Na and ether as a reagent. Uh, lastly, decarboxylation of alkanoate salt, RCONA, this is alkanoate salt as a reactant, and we're going to use sodium hydroxide as a reagent. We will have alkene as the product here. Let's go into detail for each of the reaction. Here we have the reactant and alkene with one double bond and the reagent would be hydrogen gas. 2H hydrogen atom is going to be uh, inserted inside this compound and will take the electron from the covalent bonding here. So this is basically an electrophilic addition of alkenes. We use platinum or palladium or nickel and we are going to also need heat. Okay, let's try and do the reactions in example 5.1. Now, Firstly, what is the name of this compound? Yes, exactly. The name is propene. You don't need to put prop 1 in or 1 propene because carbon number 1 is understood. Hydrogen gas is the reagent. Nickel is the catalyst and this heat is the condition. Let's draw the compound using expanded structure. Okay. This is 1H here, and this is 1H here, and 1H here. This is the original propene. Now, what happened when hydrogen gas is inserted into alkene? Electrophilic addition is um, in process. So, we put H over here and H over here. This electron, these two electrons from uh, the double bond will uh, be used to form covalent bond here. Okay, we will look at the mechanism later. So what is the name for the product here? Yes, the name is propane. Okay, oh, I can use a, yes, that's right. Okay. Now, let's look at the second one. Let's name this product first. This is a methyl. And then uh, we can uh, count from here because the substituent is here. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is a 2-methyl but 2 in because the double bond is between carbon number 2 and carbon number 3. Okay, so hydrogen gas is going in and using platinum with heat, we are going to get 
uh, carbon over here. Okay, this is CH3, this is CH3, the substituent. And then this is the double bond. I'm, I'm, I'm actually copying the question, the reactant right now. So now we're going to put the hydrogen, two atoms, one on the second carbon and another one on the third carbon. So we are going to rub off the ah, double bond there. Now, what is the name for this compound? Okay, we have this is the substituent. This is carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three and four. So the name would be 2-methylbutane. That's right. The third question this is a cyclohexene. Ah. This can be carbon number one. This can be carbon number one. Whichever you choose. Because it's going to be the same. Right. So what are we going to have when we do electrophilic addition on this alkene? So, we are going to get, yeah, that's it. Since the question is using skeletal structure, we use skeletal structure as well. And this is the name, cyclohexane. For the second reaction, before we hydrolyze a green reagent, we need to prepare the green reagent first. So how do we form or how do we produce a green R reagent? We will use haloalkane as a reactant. Haloalkane is also known as alkyl halide. So what are we going to use? Magnesium metal in ether solvent. We're going to produce alkyl magnesium Halide. Let's do example 5.2 and produce our first Renard reagent. What is the name for this haloalkene? This is the parent haloalkene, but we're going to calculate it being at number one, two, three, four carbons, this is also will become substituent. So the name for this reactant would be one chloro okay three methyl butane. So this is how you name haloalkane. Right. Where the chlorine is, where the halide is, is the place where magnesium will enter. So it's going to become CH3, CH, CH3. I put it up there because of the space. CH2, CH2 and magnesium chloride. So it's going to be 1 chloro 3 methyl butyl magnesium chloride. For the naming of green region, we don't need to do. So here you are, your first green region. Now that we have a green region ready, we can hydrolyze it. How do we hydrolyze it? We're going to add H2O in an acidic environment. It's going to form an RH. RH is an alkene together with MgOH acts. Let's do example 5.3. Question number one is giving you a ready Renard reagent. So all we have to do is just remove the 
magnesium chloride and replaced it with a hydrogen atom. So CH3, CH, CH3, I think this is the same compound that we did previously. So this would become CH3. It is uh, 2-methylbutane. For question number two, we are going to remove the magnesium bromide from carbon number two here. So we're just going to get CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. What is this? Yes, butane. The naming is not that difficult, isn't it? Okay, the next reaction that we're going to look at is wood. It's a process utilizing an active reducing agent, sodium, to synthesize longer alkenes. So we have an identical alkyl halide becoming an alkene here. And we can also have more than one types of alkyl halide. So we're going to get mixtures of products. Let's look at the first one when we have identical alkyl halides. Rx is a haloalkane and we're going to take the R together with another R is going to be an alkane. For example, 5.4 question number one here, we have a bromopropane and then we are going to uh, assign this part as R and this part as X. So what we're going to have is an R, R. So the first R would be CH3, CH2, CH2. And then the second part would be CH2, CH2, CH3. Uh, so if you want to uh, simplify this a bit, put the CH2s in the bracket. There are four of them, and here you are. What's the name of this alkane? There are six, so the name is hexane. Can you see? The alkane synthesized is longer than usual. Right. For question number two, we're going to have chlorine at carbon number two. So, the R is going to come into the compound at carbon number 2 as well. So it's going to be R and R like that. So let's do it here. CH3, C, H, CH2, CH3. And then it's coming from here. CH, CH3, CH2, CH3. Ah, so it's a longer alkane. And now, if you want to name them, we need to so call the substituent. Okay. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have three, four, dimethyl hexane. That's the name for our product here. Yeah. Woods ration. We don't usually use Woods ration in the lab because it has limitation. It gives a low yield when we use smaller haloalkanes. The fourth reaction is decarboxylation of alkanoate salt. This is an alkanoate salt and Telling from the name decarboxy, meaning we are going to remove the carbon, C-O-O-N-A. And we are left with R, which is going to react with hydrogen from sodium hydroxide to produce alkane and sodium carbonate. Here, sodium ethanoate can react easily, but other ethanoate will give a mixture of product. 
For example, 5.6, question number 1, as we can see here, sodium ethanoate is going to produce a 90% of methane gas and another 10% mixtures of other products. Question number 2, let's draw the answer. CH3, CH2 and CH3 because this CO and A is going to be removed and the hydrogen from sodium hydroxide is going to be attached here. So the name for the product here is propane. For the third question, we're going to remove C, O, O, and A over here and attach hydrogen here. So the answer would be, let's name the product together. We have a substituent at carbon number 2 here. This is carbon number 1, 3, and 4. So the name would be 2-methylbutane. The second part of any homologous series that we're going to discuss is chemical reactions. Alkane is a homologous series that have the least chemical reaction. It's halogenation and combustion only. Why is it the chemical reaction for alkanes is just halogenation and combustion only. It's because alkanes are very less reactive towards any polar or ionic reagents. It can react with only non-polar reagents such as oxygen and bromine. Here, the low reactivity of alkanes toward reagents are explained by a Latin name Param affinis, meaning low affinity. So we call alkanes paraffins. Halogenation reaction of alkane is a free radical substitution reaction. Alkane reacts with halogen to produce haloalkanes in the presence of UV light. So as you can see here, alkane react with a chlorine gas, for example, under the presence of UV lights or high temperature, will produce a haloalkane and an acid. We have to learn the mechanism of free radical substitution here. The reaction shown to you is the general reaction for this reaction, whereby we're going to use methane. With methane, the reaction produces a mixture of halomethanes and a hydrogen halide. So let's look at the first step. Initiation step is when a free radical of bromine is being produced by UV light. The second step is called propagation step. Here, the bromine free radical that we have produced is going to attack one covalent bond in methane and is going to be producing a methyl free radical. And this free methyl radical is going to initiate another free radical formation of a bromine molecule and this reaction is going to produce the main product which is bromomethane. Since it's a propagation step, this two reaction is going to be going on and on repeatedly until we have to stop and terminate it by one last step which is called termination step. Termination step is used in order for us to stop all the free radicals 
from attacking the bonds of um, normal molecule. So as you can see here, a free radical of bromine will be neutralized by a free radical of bromine also to produce back a molecule of bromine. And free radical of methyl will combine with free radical of bromine to form a bromomethane, the main product. And finally, the free radical of methyl, two of them is going to produce a uh, ethane. Uh, so interestingly, the halogenation of methane is going to produce a big portion of bromomethane and a little portion of ethane. How are we going to know which haloalkane is going to be produced when we have several classification of carbon in the compound? So we have to look at the stability of haloalkane and also the stability of free radical. As we remember, tertiary free radical is more stable than secondary is more stable than primary and more stable than methyl free radical. So as alkyl halide. So if we have the opportunity to put the halogen at a tertiary carbon, that would be a better uh, product because it's more stable, therefore it's going to become a major product. Let's watch a video on mechanism again, uh, but this time this video is a mute one where you can focus on what is going on during each of the reactions in the three steps. Okay. Let's do example 5.7, question number 1. Where should we put the bromine? We can put it either in carbon number 1 or carbon number 2 and produce bromoethane. For question number 2, there is a secondary free radical going to be formed in the middle. So, the major product would be CH3, CH, Cl, CH3. So you are going to form a 2-chloropropene because it's a major product having to be formed from secondary free radical which is more stable. The third question is, we are having a tertiary free radical over there. So we are going to produce a CH3 and then a bromine will be attached to carbon number 2 over there together with an alkyl group methyl and then this is the final product, the major product. What is its name? Let's circle the substituent. The name would be 2-bromo, 2-methyl, oh, butane. Ah, this one should be up here with no spacebar. Okay, now what about question number four? For question number four, there is not enough bond for carbon of the quaternary there because all four has been filled with uh, an alkyl methyl. So we can only put the bromine at the carbon which is a primary carbon there. Choose one. I'm going to choose the first one. 
So Br, CH2, this is the middle, this is the upper part, this is the right part, and this is the bottom part. Okay. So the name for this compound would be 1 bromo Two two di methyl one two three pro pin. Okay. Now the second reaction for alkene is combustion. Combustion of alkene is the only equation that you have to balance. So alkene burn in air limited oxygen to give carbon monoxide gas water and heat so in the question you're going to be given either limited oxygen or excess oxygen for methane you're going to use 3 over 2 oxygen and it will produce 1 CO carbon monoxide 2 molecules of water and heat Next, we're going to look at the combustion of butane in limited oxygen. This is the balance equation. It will use 9 over 2 molecule of oxygen gas and it will produce 4 molecule of carbon monoxide with 5 molecule of water and heat. When alkenes are burned in excess oxygen, it will give carbon dioxide, gas, water and heat. So, for butane, we're going to use 13 over 2 molecules of oxygen to produce 4 carbon dioxide and 5 water together with heat. And after that, we are going to uh, combust pentane in excess oxygen we're going to produce eight oxygen molecule and five carbon dioxide uh, will be produced together with six molecules of water and heat finally we have come to the end final slide of alkanes this is a beginning of chapter 5. See you soon for lesson 63. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye.